flattered. You know, I mean, I'm just a normal guy like you guys out there. I, I got an opportunity. I seized the opportunity, and I, you know, the door opened for me, and I took it. You know, and and here I am, and uh, it's it's awesome. And I mean, yeah, I, I go into place. I was at a lawnmower shop the other day picking up a, a weed eater, and the guy told me. Uh, he says, you know, I know Steve Musgrave. He said, you do? He says, yeah, but he's a lot bigger than you. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He says, yeah, he's one of them UFC referee guys. You, have you ever seen him? I said, yeah, yeah, watch that. Is he pretty good? Yeah, he's all right, man. And uh, then he looks at it again. He says, you Steve Mazzagotti? I said, yeah, that's what my debit card says. <laughs> but it's kind of funny, you know. It's kind of funny that, uh, you know, people, like, they look at you and say, do I know you from high school? Or I'll walk down. People just, you know, they recognize you. You know they recognize you. And you, you say, what's up? And sometimes you have to say, yeah, I get in a cage a lot. You know, and they're, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. But, yeah, absolutely, you know, uh, for some reason in this sport, the high, the referees are high profile. It's uh, mm -hmm. it's kind of scary. I mean, you know, we're only as good as our last bad call. And uh, <laughs> and we could be bad for our good calls, you know. I mean, it's just the nature of the game. So uh, it's, a, it's a thankless job as far as that goes. But I love the fans, and they just have to understand that uh, we're not always looking at what they're looking at. You know, they're watching a show. We're looking for fouls. We're reffing a fight. The judges are, are looking for effective striking, effective grappling, effective ring work, you know. They're not watching a fight. They're not drinking a beer. They're not, you know, a lot of stuff that you see thrown out there and, and explosions that are going on aren't landing, you know. They're not hitting. So a, a judge is looking for, you know, strikes that actually hit, effectively hit, you know. So, and, and as a referee, I'm looking for the same thing. Are they effectively, is a fighter intelligently defending himself is he effectively defending himself you know i'm not you can be intelligently defending yourself and still getting your ass whooped you know mm -hmm. uh so you got to be effective at it too dude i'm not going to sit there and let you take 15 punches to the face and that's not uh effectively defending yourself i don't know maybe rocky was pretty effective in his movies but <laughs> well, well how do you you know, you just, you, you spoke on that, and, you know, obviously you have a, you know, a, a lot of heat on you right at this moment. You know, when you Google your name, there's a there's a lot of negative comments um, towards you just because you're out there protecting the safety of the fighters. How do you, how does that affect your next bout? Are you, are you thinking about it while you're refereeing and trying to watch for these things? No, no, you know, what, what you got to realize is, the things that I've done were big things, you know, and, and a lot of people talk about them, and once they've talked about them on an open forum, it gets posted on Google, you know. I mean, right. you'd be surprised what you find out about your kids. My kids in there for motocross, uh, ice skating, uh, gymnastics, all the different events that they do. And, um, you know, I'm fortunately in a position where I'm on, you know, getting wrote about a lot in different forums, and uh, people aren't always going to understand why we do the things we do, but I got a uh, set standard operating procedure, you know, that I go through and certain criteria that got to be met, and I don't let the fact that they're a grappler change my mind from a striker. I don't try to referee their fight based on their style. I referee a fight the same every fight, you know. If you're on the ground, neither one of you is do able to get their game going, I'm going to stand you up. Uh, you're taking shots. You're not effectively... Defending yourself, I stop the fight. If you're out there, you're, you're, uh, you get caught with a big shot, you find yourself on the ground, and you're trying to get your stuff together, and the shots are missing you, and you're pulling guard, and you're scrambling for legs, and you're moving around doing the things you have to do to avoid getting, uh, you know, beat down, I'm going to let you fight. And a lot of times that freaks people out. Because they don't understand, you know, these guys, it, my, the level that you see me on TV, work their ass off to get where they're at. This is how they support their families. This, this is their dream, you know, I mean, right. they, they don't even think about lose. These guys, I go into the dressing room and I, I talk extensively with them about what I expect them to do, uh, you know, about striking to the back of the head. I, and I, I mean uh, targeting the back of the head, not just striking. you got to target it. You're looking at it. You hit it multiple times. Like, well, I'm going to target the groin. Boom, you kick it once. You say, hey, dude, I'm sorry. You don't take two or three more shots at it, you know, because it's there available. 
Right. And I tell them, you know, if you, if you do that, I'm going to take a, a, a point from you without a warning. This is your only warning. Same as grabbing the cage. We can't let a guy grab the cage, pull himself back up into position, and then win the fight. Or he's on the ground, he's on his back, he grabs the cage, swings his body around, and sinks in a big old triangle choke. Or, you know, whatever, a submission of whatever. You, you can't let a guy do that without penalizing him for it. And we always take the dominant position away from a fighter who committed the foul, if he's in a dominant position at the time. So, you know, people don't understand the rules exactly all the time, why things happen, but that's the way they got to happen. And sometimes when you got the balls to make the calls, it pisses people off. I mean, some of the calls that I had to make, I didn't want to do it. But, you know, it's easy not to do your job. We see people doing it every day, you know. I mean, you work with guys that don't do shit, you know. But I get paid to look for fouls and enforce the rules, and I hope the fighters know that when they go out there, they don't got to worry about this dude wrapping them in the back of the head. They don't have to worry about them grabbing the cage and swinging around and, and grabbing the submission. you, you got to jump in and, take and, and enforce the rules, or what good are you, you know. And... This stuff goes down in one or two seconds. There's no instant replay. There's no time to think about it. You just have to know the rules so damn good that it just comes second nature out there to, to you know, enforce these things and, and do them. But now, you, you said you, uh, you left the fights, you know, the same way for everyone. But what about uh, people like Big Nog who's, you know, been known for taking a lot of damage and, 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 you know, he's in a compromising position. Maybe somebody's, you know, in the mountain just going at him. But, you know, do you give him a, him a chance to, to absorb some of that before uh, stepping in? Or, you know, he's not doing anything? You, you jump right on. Well, that falls under the A, B, C, and D class fighters. You know, the A class fighters being the person you just mentioned and some of the guys we see fighting for titles and making it that far. 